Uh, hey, this week on Tactical Rifleman, we are going to talk about uh, prism optics, the advantages and disadvantages of you guys running them on your combat carbines, right? Your rifles, you know, the combat applications, hunting applications, wh whatever it is your your mission or your situation is. And the the first way to really start that is you got to say, well, what's a prism? Because I know it looks same size as a red dot optic. Um, but the difference is instead of having a laser emitter in there that's basically just projecting that red dot up onto a pane of glass and then you know you, you move your head around and everything right um, this actually has a reticle that is etched it's actually scratched into that pane of glass right pros and cons of that um, right off the bat is if your battery is dead uh, you can still see it. the way the the way that they etch the glass. It basically will show up as a black line, right? It's uh, catching the reflection of the black off the inside of the tube here. So um, if that optic dies, your your battery dies, whatever, you've still got that uh, you've still got that uh, reticle there. Um, okay, uh, the disadvantage though is it's on only one pane of glass in the middle. So if you're moving your head left and right on that stock of that gun, uh, you're looking through that pane of glass at a different angle. That's what we call parallax. So uh, prism optics are historically always very, very, they're famous for their parallax being bad parallax, bad parallax. So, um, okay, if you're running a... Uh, a prism optic you've got to run a uh, you've just got to make sure you've got a good cheek weld on the gun you're always centering that pupil of your eye directly behind it uh, most famous uh, prism and the one almost everybody all my military guys are familiar with is the ACOG and um, ACOGs are bomb proof the reason why the, mili uh, the military specifically Marine Corps right off the bat went with the ACOG and most of them are five or three X. This is what they call the mini ACOG. It's a one and a half X. I actually got it off of Emory, uh, one of Emory's rifles. Uh, the reason why the Marine Corps went with these things, they are insanely tough. But also the Marine Corps, you know, remember they're making that transition uh, late 90s, early 2000s, they're making that transition from just iron sights to going to optics. Okay, well, I, the big complaints back then was, well, glass breaks and you know, batteries go dead. So they wanted something that was bomb proof. And the ACOG was proven through tests to be insanely tough. I mean, you could beat the snot out of these things and you, very seldom could you actually break it. We've had... ACOGs in combat that the glass, uh, one of the panes of the glass, like the front would have caught a piece of shrapnel or something, the glass would be broken, but it could still be used because the glass on the inside was still good to go. Um, as far as illuminating it, instead of running a battery on it, uh, they had tritium inserts, but also uh, like this one right here, you'll see they have the option of having a fiber optic on the outside. This fiber optic wire encased in clear plastic, you know, if you're using it in the dark, inside a room, whatever, dark building, or at night outside, that little tritium isotope would make the reticle glow enough. But outside, when it's really bright outside, you want that dot to be glowing even more. Uh, the fiber optic here on top being exposed to the sunlight, grabbing all that extra light energy would make that dot gl uh, glow even more. Um, a lot of people, for example, thought that it was too bright and they um, easy to fix. You just take a little piece of electrical tape, cover up however much you wanted of the fiber optic to adjust it to the brightness that you wanted. So ACOG's famous for being bomb proof. Right? But uh, my gripe with it, my, the only real con of an ACOG is you, it was made for that Marine, that young Marine with perfect 2020 vision. Okay, I had that most of my career, but I'm older now. I'm 56 years old. With my bad eyes, I no longer have perfect 2020 vision. So when I look through this, I'm no longer looking at a red dot, like through a you know red dot optic or a EOTech. I'm looking at an etched reticle 
and without perfect eyesight, I have a hard time seeing that reticle. So what do you do? Well, you just wear your regular reading glasses, right? And then you'll be able to see the reticle perfect. Uh, or, you know, you could get prescription shooting glasses. Okay, my problem with that though is if I've got to pull my combat rifle out, truck gun, whatever, home defense gun, whatever it may be, am I going to, I already got to bring ear pro with me. Uh, now I've also got to bring sh prescription shooting glasses with me. I'm just not good on that. Uh, and it's an easy fix uh, and a couple of these other companies have done it. Uh, but that's my biggest gripe with the ACOG was they never modernized it. All they had to do was put a adjustable ocular lens on it. Would it have taken away maybe slightly a little bit of the reliability? Honestly, no, I don't think so. You can still make it bomb proof. Would it have added more price to it? Yeah, it would because now you're adding more moving part. Would it raise the price a little bit for the Marine Corps? But hey, how about let's... Uh, let's keep up with modern times here. So I was a little disappointed at the ACOG when they, they just never modernized it. They trusted, hey, we've already got the military contracts. Everybody loves them. Um, okay. So they never improved the ACOGs and um, is what it is. Now, Emory's running the new one and a half power, um, running it as a red dot, but he also gets a little bit of magnification out of it. All right. But I... I I like the concept of a prism, but I just want somebody to modernize it. So I, you guys know I've been working with Primary Arms. I'm, I'm friends with their guy named Dimitri that develops all their reticles, their advanced combat sighting system, ACSS uh, reticles, great stuff. And he turned me on to their 1X micro prisms. And uh, that's this one right here. Right, it looks roughly the same size as a, a regular red dot. It is, okay, totally badass. Uh, matter of fact, if you want to see my whole take on this, uh, this optic, I did a whole separate video on, on this, uh, this optic. I did a whole separate video on it. You can find it in our video archive. I beat the snot out of this thing, beat the snot out of it. Uh, as far as my personal experience with it, it comes with what's called a uh, Cyclops reticle. I, I mentioned Dimitri does all these BDC reticles. I'm really not big on using the BDC portion of it because I'm running it on my small AR with a 13 7 inch barrel with a pinned brake. So it's a legal 16 inches. But basically what I'm using it for is a point blank zero. I zero at 200 meters and basically all the way out to 200 meters, it doesn't rise more than five inches over uh, my point of aim or drop more than five inches out to about 220. It, it keeps me from having to estimate range different distances. And then I know my holdovers to go all the way back to 400 meters with it. Again, my personal experience. I like the black etched reticle in it. It's got like the old donut of death you got from your EOTech with a small little chevron in the middle. It illuminates great at night. But to be honest with you, um, it is so awesome, the, the, black, uh, the black donut of death with the chevron. Most of the time in class, I don't even turn it on. If it's a daytime class, I don't even turn it on. I just run the, the blacked out reticle. It is illuminated, but my favorite part of this prism optic is on the back right here. Uh, it has ocular focus ring, so I can dial this thing back and forth, all right? What this allows me to do, guys, understand uh, my eyes are, I'm 56 years old, my eyes are different than your eyes. My eyes are different than the cameraman's, they're different than the sound guys, they're different than my wife's. And uh, in order for me to shoot a, a regular sniper rifle, we're used to on big sniper rifle scopes, focusing that ocular lens for your eye. Okay, because you want a, that crystal clear reticle. Well, if I ask for that on a big scope, why would I not ask for that on a small scope also? I want a crystal clear reticle because even on 1X, I can crush targets at 400 meters with this thing. You put the magnifier behind it, it's even better, right? Um, it is awesome having that little ocular focus knob on the back. And to me right there, that's my biggest selling point for this thing. The only gripe that I, that 
I've ever seen anybody have with this 1X micro prism is you see how low the turrets are, right? Um, there's, there's not big knobs sticking out on the sides of this thing. Elevation knob and windage knob are very, very low. How they do that is by instead of having quarter or half MOA clicks in it, uh, they are one MOA clicks. And everybody says, well, you know, I don't like one MOA clicks because I can't get a really perfect zero. Uh, honest guys, you understand me shooting my 200 meter target, right? Because I zero at 200 meters. Each click is two inches. If I'm not running a magnifier, this is one X with my naked eye. Can I even see two inches at 200 meters? You see what I'm getting at? So. It having one MOA uh, clicks on it, in other words, it's uh, two inches at 200 meters, it's one inch at 100 meters, it's a half inch at 50 meters. If you're zeroing at 50 meters and you need to make less than half M, uh, less than a half inch click, all right, maybe it bothers you. Doesn't bother me, all right? Um, so people look at it and they're like, well, it's just, uh, it's one X, Carl, so it's basically just a red dot. All right, you can say that, but um, for me, I like having that crystal clear, nice reticle in it. And uh, that they have a three inch, uh, three X magnifier that you can mount behind it. All right, and uh, with that three X magnifier behind it, with that uh, that fancy Cyclops reticle in it, I'm here to tell you guys, it is it is totally badass. So I can run this. Mount it on the back of the gun here. Now again, I'm not torquing it down for you, but you grasp having it rock to the side. Um, I can still run it. And then if I need it, all I got to do is rotate it over. It lines up perfect. It does not interfere with my rear sight. I don't got to take it off. The eye relief is perfect set up for this thing. And now I'm able to... Uh, not just engage targets at 400 meters, but I'm also able to ID, is it a threat, is it not a threat, is it a threat that actually warrants deadly force. So having a, a magnifier, magnifiers are awesome, you guys know that, and I just think it's cool that they also have that set up for this. Very, very awesome. They got bigger and better ones. Before I get into those, I'm gonna hit, let uh, YouTube give you guys a commercial. And so if you're looking at running a magnifier, the advantage of this primary arms one is it actually got uh, a ranging reticle in it. So even if you don't have a ranging reticle in your, let's say you're running an EOTech or an aim point with just a dot, you can put their uh, 3X magnifier behind your EOTech, behind your red dot, and it's got a ranging reticle in it. And uh, I found it to be very, very accurate. Um, goes great behind my 1X magnifier. I mentioned they got other magnifiers that are uh, stronger. They took basically that 1X magnifier and they look almost identical, don't they? They look almost identical, just slightly bigger. Guys, this is 3X, all right? Uh, a lot of the first uh, ACOGs that I saw overseas, big monster ACOGs, uh, they, were, they were 3X. And this, so look at the, how small the footprint is on this thing. All right, a windage and uh, windage and elevation adjustment still got the low turrets, but they've got 80 MOA adjustments, 80 minutes of angle adjustment, windage and elevation, right? But they listened when people complained about the 1X. The adjustments on uh, this 3X is quarter MOA. So in other words, if you want to make quarter inch adjustments on your, your, your 100 meter target, okay. Um, they listen, they listen. I thought that was cool. The other part though is more important to me is this thing is eight ounces. That's it. So if you're trying to set up a light gun and you don't want to put a big rifle, hunting rifle scope, you know, it's in close, whether it's deer season, something like that, you're putting it on a brush gun, a lever gun. This is 3X magnification, but you're only adding eight ounces to your gun. And that, that, 
that's really cool, really cool. Uh, as far as reticles in it, it is a little large. It doesn't have that Cyclops reticle. It's got uh, actually a choice of a bunch of different reticles, but the big ones are the Raptor 556-308. In other words, the BDC reticle in it, and it's got dots for wind, uh, for holding for winds. Uh, that reticle is good for 5.56 five, ammo and 308 ammo. And then they have a flip side one called the Raptor AK 300 Blackout, which is good for, you're right, AK ammo and 300 Blackout ammo. And then they've got another one that's uh, called the Griffin Mill. You still get your donut to death in there. But if you're one of those guys like me that wants to use the sniper data off of his PDA or his phone, his ballistic calculator, it's actual mill increment so you can do exact holdovers. I'm like, that's an awful lot to be squeezing into a little uh, 3X, uh, 3X prism, but uh, it turns out you can focus that ocular uh, adjustment there. And if the reticle is crystal clear, Guys, you'd be surprised how well you can uh, how well you can actually aim at that target. Totally badass, right? Um, everything that those big, fancy uh, ACOG optics had that you see all the Marines and the Army guys running to Afghanistan and Iraq, all the pros of that, but without the con of not being able to focus it to your eye added to the back and again this thing is half the size of a 3x acog right uh, from there uh, primary arms not to be outdone um, i sent him the email he's like dude comma i really love this 3x uh, this 3x prism they go well hey ha have you tried our 5x prism yet and i'm like no i i have your 3x prism like, no the 5x so I need this, I need this. So anyways, they hooked me up with a 5X Prism. I did not buy the 5X Prism, I did not. Um, but I would, here's why. This thing's uh, same, windage and, uh, uh, same windage and elevation adjustment. You still get, eight, uh, you, you're only getting 50 MOA's adjustment on this one, all right? Um, turret, same size. But the cool part is it is still quarter MOA adjustments, 5X, you get more minute adjustments. Now from the 3X, it is again, slightly bigger, slightly, but guys, this is 5X. For all you guys out there running those big, uh, you know, your, your one to six X low power variable optic, this thing is one, four, uh, one quarter of the size and weight of your scope, right? It's coming in right at eight and a half ounces. So if you're wanting your scope to be totally bomb proof, your rifle to be bomb proof, you can throw it down. Uh, you want it to be tough, but you still want it to be crystal clear. You can focus the reticle perfect and still be able to engage those targets. 5X is the catch me out. It really is. Um, ACS, uh, the ACSS reticles in it, they've got a couple that you can choose from. The ones I like are their 556Y, which basically equates to yards, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then the other one is the Aurora Mill, which again, you've got your mill grid in it. Both of them have your range estimation scales that go out to the side. And again, the ocular focus. I can't stress it enough, guys. I hate a blurry red dot. I hate a blurry donut of death. I love a crystal, crystal, crystal clear uh, reticle. Um, man, I got, I got a bunch of stuff I want to tell you about all three of these. I'm going to do one more break for YouTube real quick, and then we're going to wrap this up. So I mentioned all of them have an illuminated reticle. They got 13 illumination settings. Three of them are nighttime settings. So if you're running night vision, right, uh, you understand just like I put my magnifier back here, I can also mount a 
uh, PVS-14 on the back. They make weapon mounts for PVS-14. So if you're out shooting raccoons or uh, you know something like that in the back, coyotes in the backyard, a uh, great setup for that. If you're a military guy and you're running night vision goggles, you know, you, you're going to need a little taller riser, but you'll be able to look through it and still see that reticle on one of those three night vision settings. The, the cool part is unlike a lot of the red dots that are out there, when they say it is daylight bright, they're daylight bright. So you could be out on the brightest day out on the shooting range. You put it on setting 10 and it is bright enough for you to shoot it. Uh, with the reticle illuminated. But uh, and seriously though, really, really bright days, depending on what color target I'm shooting at, a lot of times I turn the reticle completely off and I just run the black etched reticle like I was shooting uh, crosshairs in a sniper scope. But the illuminated reticle is there if you need it. It's got your, uh, what they call auto live motion sensing. In other words, it turns on and off. Uh, uh, other companies call it shake awake. Different, different name for it, same thing. The different risers, uh, you can go really low if you're putting out on, let's say, a, a lever gun or a shotgun. Uh, it'll go from 1.1 inches high all the way up to over two inches. If you need to go higher than that because you're a secret squirrel running gas mask with nods, I, I bet you could get longer screws and stack them and probably go four inches if that's your thing. Again, not my personal thing. Um, Everybody loves Vortex for their uh, limited lifetime warranty. I I'm here to tell you, uh, Primary Arms lifetime warranty has served me and everybody that I know 100% just as good as Vortex, no questions asked. Is it tough? Are these things tough, guys? How tough are they? Well, if you go back to that video I mentioned, the one that I did on our, on uh, my 1X Micro Prism, go back and watch that video and you'll see, I, no joke, put it in the freezer, pack the whole gun in ice. I then break the ice off of it with a hammer while I'm sitting at the shooting stool and I check, if, see if it deviated zero or if it makes the gun or optic uh, malfunction. I then put it in the oven, in the oven, Right, because there were guys complaining about EOTEX having thermal drift being in that trunk of that cop car in Texas. Trunks of cop cars in Texas get hot. I set the oven at 270. We actually forgot about it. We came back the next day. It had been sitting for hours at 270. We pulled it out with oven mitts. I uh, put it back on the lower. It wouldn't fit the whole rifle. Um, but my, my Surefire weapon light held up too. Put it on the gun, and again, no shift of no shift of the zero. Guys, I don't know what else I can do. I, I just don't know what else you can do to beat on this thing. Mud, whatever, throw it on the ground at the range. I'll do it to mine so you don't have to do it to yours. I'm here to tell you they hold up, right? So um, they're tough. Here's the cool part about the magnification, right? I, I, again, I, I run the 1X Prism on my work gun. My other work gun's got an EOTech on it. I love the EOTech, all right? But I'm gonna wrap this up real quick. You got that 5X micro prism, even the three, but the five. The cool part about it is it's not only are you able to put that dot on that target at distance, but you're able to identify the target. You're able to estimate range with the ranging reticle in it. And, and then you're able to engage that target. And again, it's got holds for uh, winds and stuff like that, but you're able to do it at an extended distance all at half the weight of a traditional rifle scope. And uh, if you want to talk like CQB distances, well, Carl, 5X, I can't run that in the shootouts. Yes, you can. All right, uh, the guys run them forever. It's called the bend and aiming concept. If you don't believe me, you can take any red dot and just cover the front of it with tape, all right? And what you're doing is while you move it from one target in the room to the other, uh, you'll see that your open eye, your your Control, uh, control arm side eye is seeing the target. Your dominant eye looking through the optic is gonna see that illuminated reticle and you're not gonna have any problems hitting at all. It's called the bend and aiming concept. Look it up, do your homework. So the argument that, well, I don't wanna use a 5X or a 3X for CQB, okay. But um, red dot versus prisms. All right, some people like red dots. I like the the toughness of a prism, all right? I, 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 if all I'm gonna do is CQB, I, I swear by my EOTech. But if I've got a wide variety of mission set, 
uh, zombie apocalypse, whatever your personal thing is, Prism's a lot tougher. Prism with a little bit of magnification against that low power variable optic, I'm here to tell you without a doubt, a, a, a good high quality Prism uh, like the primary arms or the ACOG is gonna be so much tougher than even your best uh, low power variable optics that are out there, right? I've got affiliate code for a bunch of different companies that you know that I swear by. But if you're interested in one of these here from primary arms, you can check out my affiliate code at our YouTube channel, Tactical Rifleman. Um, and I'll make sure that you guys get the best price for it. That's all I got, you know the deal. Leave the questions, comments below. I'll see you guys next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.